Hi, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Actually, I hope you're having a fabulous day. You know, sometimes choosing the right word will set the tone. And my favorite word for a long time was fabulous. Still like it because it has, I guess, a meaning behind it which I'll share in a second. But first, let me introduce myself, Phyllis Moore, Philosophically Speaking, and I invite you to click like, share, and subscribe, and stay part of the conversation. But years ago, I was going through really a very dire time. I mean, I was struggling. I had, you know, was going through a divorce, and I had two children, and so all of the the bills and the emotional part and whatever, but I adopted that word fabulous because I, I, I just thought it's sounded great. And there was something about the way that you say it. It just kind of infuses you with this energy that kind of propels you into a better place. And so when people would, you know, see me instead of, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Or fine. You know, those, those, you know, lesser, you know, committed words, but I would say I'm fabulous. And I would just kind of all of a sudden, I was, you know, saying it a different way. And sometimes people would laugh at me, but it also, I guess it evoked that feeling within myself as well as others on the receiving end of that. Because essentially, when you are going, you know, through your day, if you start believing what you're saying, you can easily rise to that level of excitement, enthusiasm, goodness, whatever. And and you can start believing your own hype, if you will. But, you know, if we wait for circumstances to catch up with us or present themselves in such a way that we are feeling those, you know, and, and actually, you know, good things are happening to us, so of course we feel good. Well, that may not happen. So where do you find happiness? How do you find out happiness? And there are lots of phrases, figures of speech that we use. It is what it is and, you know, what you're going to do and whatever. But um, one of them that, that you've probably heard, maybe you've even said, is what else can you do? You know, and, and we say that rhetorically, facetiously, but I want us to pursue that a little bit today because this is that time of year when we get really, really busy and hectic. And and of course, that now applies to any time of year when we're out in traffic and there's bunches of traffic, bunches of traffic. There's a, a lot of traffic in stores, on the road. That is not just at holiday time, but you know, anytime, you know, we go out to the, to the mall or to the bank or to the library or think in some respects, somehow we are going to make it a real quick errand and it always takes longer than we think. So just realize that there are more people on the planet than just us and chances are someone else had the same idea to say they were going to the bank or the post office or the library or wherever. But that saying what else can you do? I want you to kind of dissect it with me just a little bit, just for a moment, because a lot of times that's a, a throwaway thing. It's a rhetorical comment like, oh, well, have a nice day. You know, what you going to do? But specifically, put those words together. What else can you do? Now, that may be an admission of defeat, like we have no control, we can't do it, whatever. But I want you to consider like, like I am aware all the time, anywhere you go, there are people wanting, needing, asking for money. It may be on a street corner. It may be at the intersection outside of a shopping center or, you know, where, wherever traffic is going to be. There are those who are either homeless or disabled or in need in some way. In front of stores, you'll see a, a bell ringer, a boot a collection bin, you know, for churches or missions or ministries or uh, some kind of, of at-risk kids or those in need. And I probably have shared this before, but, you know, all of us probably there but for the grace of God go I. We all could probably be on the receiving end or neediness end of that. But, so I'm not dismissing any of that. It's just harder and harder for many of us to donate or give to every cause. It doesn't mean they're not worthwhile. It's just that the needs exceed our ability to do that. And that's, you know, from, from the government on down and people are always coming in and saying, please budget us into, into your um, giving 
and and that's great you know churches community groups whatever you know there are all kinds of things that folks just really need but if you don't have the money and you, you're kind of tapped out or not willing or you, you, it just won't go but so far I want you to consider that phrase what else can you do more specifically than that what else can you do because there are things that you can do that cost nothing that only cost your time and energy Whenever I have gone somewhere and I have opened the door for someone or smiled at them or let them go ahead of me, and the thought has occurred to me, you know, how, how much time did that take? How much energy? What did that really cost me? It didn't cost me anything. If any, it, you know, in fact, probably it made me feel better. So I'm, I'm suggesting that we all consider what else we can do because that's kind of like a brick and mortar. You know, you've got your bricks there that are in a big stack, but what is it that glues them together? It is that mortar. It is that something that will will seal them together and make them stick. So I think that's important because those are elements that we need to have as well. And not just, not just the big things, not just the things that benefit us, but whatever we can give to other people. And a lot of times it is acts of kindness or generosity or just listen to someone or have small talk in the, in the store, wherever we are. And the other day I was making a purchase in a store and there was a man nearby and, you know, his tone, you know, it's almost like a ripple effect that when you say something to another person like, oh, I'm sorry if I'm holding up the line or, oh, excuse me, or would you like to go ahead? Those kind of things. I think sometimes those surprise other people, but I really believe that it does have a ripple effect that if we do something, you know, you can almost see it happening that if you hold the door for someone and then you walk on and you look back and you see they hold the door for the next person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's like pay it forward, pay it back. You know, it really is a wonderful chain reaction that I think we need to have. And sometimes it can be a new habit. Maybe we don't do that all the time or we get busy or whatever the case may be. I was in a, a shopping center recently and when I came out this man was parked in the middle it looked like he pulled out of a parking spot and just stopped but apparently what had transpired was his car died and this was an older man and several people in the parking lot rallied around and, and they started asking others can you help this man can you help jump his car or move it out of the way and I I loved that because I thought, you know, that's what, you know, none of us are an island. We may get really bogged down going places and there's a long line or there's other people ahead of us or we have to wait. But in those moments when we are in need or in a position to help someone else that doesn't cost money, it only costs our time and our attitude, then that's when we really can see the human spirit and the value of caring about your neighbor and doing something for other people because we can't do it all by ourselves. So I just ask you to consider that today at this holiday season in this busy time when we all have other things to do, when we're all likely in a hurry. But if things present themselves, take that moment, take a deep breath, kind of, you know, just, just really be focused on giving in other areas than are typically there. You know, what else can you do? Every day, there are other things you can do and it will benefit others. And I guarantee you, if you have a heart, if you have a conscience, if you have a brain, Dorothy, or you know, whatever the other character in Wizard of Oz is, but um, Scarecrow. But, you know, if, if you have all of those components, put them together. I guarantee you, you will be on the receiving end of feeling really good about your capacity to not just take, but to provide and give for others as well. God bless you. I hope you have a fabulous day. And don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Bye.